Hello, I'm going to show you how to make a fancy text box in, uh, this is Photoshop Elements 9, but uh, all the tools I'm going to use you can find in just about any version of uh, Photoshop Elements and in Photoshop. Now, first of all, I've opened a picture, I've already resized it, and etc., and we're just going to work on it. The very first thing you have to do with any kind of photo is, oh, this is a background layer. You can see it's got a lock on it, and that lock means that sometimes certain things can't be done really well with that layer, so I'll never work on the background layer, plus the background layer is your original photo. You don't want to take the chance of accidentally coming over here to File and clicking Save and saving what you've done over the original. You should always try to keep your originals in case you want to go back and work on them later. Now, personally, I just take this background and I drag it down here to the Add New Layer. You can also right click on it. See where it says Layer from Background. And you can just click on that. You get this um, new layer. You can give it a name if you want or not. Just click OK and that changes it to a layer. So two ways. But you don't have a lock and now you can do anything you want to with that layer. OK. Next thing we need to do is we're going to use the marquee tools. I click and hold. I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And oh, before I do anything up here, here let's go back. I forgot to remind you, check up here to make sure you're not feathering it. You don't want to feather it. Make sure feather is 0px pixels. And then we're going to just click and drag a box out. Now we don't want to change or do anything to the original picture. We're going to come back here and at the bottom of the layers panel we're going to click the create a new layer icon, the very first one over here on the left. And we're going to work on this layer, make sure it's black, that it's highlighted. Then we're going to come over here to the toolbox to the paint bucket tool. Click on that. Over here on the left side you'll see it says pattern. It will not have a check mark in it. Put a check mark in pattern. Here are the patterns for you to choose from. Come over here and click the down arrow. And for the most part, sometimes default is up here. See these two little arrows pointing to the right? Click on it. Go all the way down to the bottom and you'll get a list of different patterns you can use that are defaults. There are two textures. You can try, you know, look at them and, you know, you'll probably have to try a few. Now these textures are fairly large. So I'm just going to use Texture Fill. And there are some smaller ones in here that you can use that come out pretty good. Let's see Texture Fill 2 again. Uh, let's use this one. Kind of greeny looking. Click on that. This little X up here to close it. Okay, and then you're just going to come over here. Make sure this layer 1 is highlighted. And just click. Yay! Okay. Now you get to have some fun. Come over here in the Layers panel at the top where it says Normal. And you go, yes, I am. Uh, click the drop down. And these are your blend modes. And you can try some of these. Overlay works sometimes pretty good. Makes it a little grainy. The one that, since I've already done this to practice it, the one that worked best I liked is Screen. Oh, but that turns it white. That's okay. Right next to the blend mode, you have the opacity. You're just going to turn the opacity down until it's kind of the, the opacity you want it to be. And like I said, you can pick other patterns and try them and see which pattern works best for you. For right now, we're going to leave it there. Okay, next thing we need to do is you want to put a little border around it. And a couple of ways work best for the border. Uh, first, click Come down here to the lower part of the Layers panel. Click the New Layer icon again. And you might want to, I just double clicked on it so I can write in the name. So we're going to put um, Border 1 because we're going to have another border above this one. Just because I tried it both ways with one border and with two borders and two borders it shows up better. Okay. Next, we are going to do the old, we're going to do stroke it. We're going to put an outline around this to be the border. And we're going to do it the old fashioned way. Over here, I'm buzzing around, right? Over here in the effects panel, 
You also have strokes, but these are kind of fancy, and then you have to tweak them a lot, and this, that, and the other. So they have their place, but for this, I like to do it the old-fashioned way. Come up here to the top left to the Edit menu. Come all the way down to about the middle where it says Stroke Outline Selection. That's the selection, and we're going to outline it. Okay, I've already determined through a process of trial and error that 15 pixels looks pretty good. Uh, what you're going to have to do, depending upon the size of the box you create and the size of the picture you put it on, you know, start with 15 or start with 10 and then go to 20 or 30. And you're going to have to kind of determine by a process of trial and error what size you need. Okay, for the color... I hate black. You can try white. Click OK. Uh, I put it on the, in the center, which means half of it's on the inside part of the selection air, um, marching ants, and half of it's on the outside part. You can put it all on the outside if you wanted. The rest you can leave just as is, and you can click OK. And that gives you a border. Here, let me get rid of this for a minute. That gives you a border that's fairly uh, stark. I mean, it stands out a lot. Now, it's on its own layer. So you can reduce its opacity, too. You can kind of, you know, make it not so white. And that looks pretty good. The other thing I did, and let me undo here. As I left that alone, or I can work with it later, I added a new layer. Well, first of all, I need to go back twice. I need the marching ants back, the selection. Then add a new layer. Once again, come up here to edit, stroke, except this time for color. I'm going to move into the picture and choose a color that's in the picture. Ooh, that's dark. Where's the other one I used? There it is. Well, okay. And then click OK. And that makes a, that makes kind of a cool border. Now, the reason I did it on top of the white border is that I tried one uh, of the color in the picture without a border in the background. And it didn't show up. It hardly showed up at all. And you can pick any of these colors once you, you know, do that. Now you just have to put the text in here. Come up to the big T for text. And this is Arial. This is a drop down. You can pick different ones. It shows you what they look like. I picked, let's pick bold italic. Once again, what size? We really won't know that. Now this is going to use this, the text color. I don't know what it'll look like. Let's type it in and see. Oh, the other thing to do is check your position. Let's make it left align. There we go. Well, that's in the same color as the border. Now, you like it there, you can move it around up in the corner. Or you can make it, you can make it black. Let's uh, change that up here. Change this to, let's make it a dark, dark gray instead of black. Put it in here. And then you can have it that color. I, you know, I kind of like it the other way with the, using this, the colors from within the picture. Now, let's say you look at this and you say, gee, that still looks awfully white. Well, here's the layer down here. See this layer with the square? You can click on it. You can try a... You can try a different blend mode, make it darker. I think you have to change the text because the text doesn't read real well. Or you could try color dodge, which brightens it up. Or, okay, I go back to overlay, which hardly makes it show. Or just lighten. And once again, you can still lower the opacity a little bit here, like that, so it doesn't quite show so much. Same thing with this border. If you think, well, this border looks kind of, you know, whatever. There it is right there. Layer 2. Border. And you can you can lower its opacity too. 
let more of the white that's behind it show through. Okay. So anyway, that's how you make your fancy text box. And uh, it looks like a fun project. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Also up here where we started with the um, rectangular marquee tool, if you click and hold on the little arrow, there's an elliptical marquee tool. Come back here, click on your original drawing. You can even, you can drag out an ellipse if you want to. And then you can, whoops, sorry. I've got to put it on a new layout. There we go. And then you could do the same thing. You can screen. You can lower the opacity until it looks like you want it to look like. Then you can edit. You can stroke it. Uh, let's make this white. Okay. Okay. And you can add another layer. And then you can edit, stroke it, color. Come here and pick the color from the whatever. Okay. And then you can make a, you know, you can make a text box that's round and just put, you know, the lettering up here across the top. Let's make this in the middle now. Center the text. Hack. Keeps printing out in the same. Yeah. There we go. Let's do it. How about me? We can center that right there. Actually it needs to be a little darker, doesn't it? There we go. So we have name, we have about me. And so that's kind of fun. Okay, I hope this helps.